After months of bombardments, Russia and Ukraine finally agreed this month on the evacuation of some civilians trapped underground in Mariupol, a key port city now in Russia's control. UN officials said they evacuated hundreds of people, but it is unknown how many others remain inside and are trying to get out. I cannot uh, say, I cannot know how many people are there, but we know by the people that left that more, much more are there. Most people who fled Mariupol after the February invasion began left individually or in small groups, often flying white rags on their vehicles to show they are not combatants. Aid workers set up tents with food and other basics in a superstore parking lot here in Zaporizhia, a city not far from the war zones, but still firmly in Ukrainian control. By the time families arrived here to find their way to refugee centers or housing with friends and families, they were exhausted and often emotionally devastated. At a nearby underground shelter, one father tells us, even after they settle in a relatively safe place, families are still afraid. Russians have all the information about us listed in their databases. If you leave their areas, you go through filtration and they take a print of every finger and your palm. They take all passport details. Despite this danger, he said, they had to leave because inside the war zone, life was unsustainable. He said bodies littered the ground. My small daughter wanted to play outside, but it was impossible. Missiles were flying outside, and when they exploded, the damage was massive. Early this week, Ukrainian leaders said their battle for Mariupol was over, urging commanders on the ground to save the lives of remaining soldiers. Hundreds of soldiers were evacuated from Azovstal, a steel company with underground bunkers built for nuclear war. Many of the Ukrainian military evacuees are now in areas controlled by Russia. Ukrainian officials say they will negotiate for their release as their families advocate for safe return. We want uh, to see our relationship uh, at home, uh, but uh, we don't know uh, how uh, long uh, time uh, they uh, they there. As fears of Russian aggression grow, Sweden and Finland have applied for NATO membership. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov brushed off the move, saying it won't make a big difference to Russian security. Millions of people have been displaced in nearly four months of war in Ukraine, and thousands have been killed. In some areas once occupied by Russia, but now back under Ukrainian control, officials are investigating mounting reports of war crimes. Heather Murdoch, VOA News, Zaporizhia, Ukraine.